Alrighty, well, we had uh, Rampage and SmackDown, which were uh, two good shows, and uh, although I do have... Did, did you, so you, did you go, did you go to Seattle or no? I did not go to Seattle, no. Yeah, that was the hottest TV crowd I think I've seen, maybe all year. Yeah, it was a hell of a that show. That crowd was so hot. It, it was a good show. Six-Man Tag was good, um, but yeah, just you know, a very, very hot crowd, and I heard Spokane tonight. Um, Seamus, you know, Seamus is the one. It's like, I mean, Drew's over and all that, but Sheamus is the one that's the big surprise now. And so people watch that match and that finish and everything where even though he lost, it's like he got over. I mean, he was he was really, really over. There was like, let's go Sheamus chance. And when Sheamus and Gunther got in together and they purposely did very you know little. I mean, they would, they would be in together for like 30 seconds and then they would, you know, other guys would get in. And they did that, I think, two or three times and three times during the match. Always made it short. Um, on purpose, um, but the crowd just went nuts every time those two were in there together. So that is something that uh, that match really turned things around for Sheamus, and um, at least at least for now, it's, you know, again, it was the first TV since that match or the first SmackDown TV. So interesting to see how that will happen. But uh, the whole Brawling Brutes team, I mean, they're 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 pretty much. Baby faces and Sheamus is like a big time baby face right now. Doing that opener, it was Gunther, Ludwig Kaiser, and Giovanni Vinci against Sheamus, Ridge Holland, and Butch. 19 minutes, and uh, it was a great match. And the crowd oh, yeah. was going Ex- crazy for excellent it. Excellent match, great heat. Yeah. Yep, they hit the Imperial Bomb on Ridge Holland to get the win, but man, that was an awesome start. Yeah, also, um, Butch wrestling is Pete Dunn. I mean, he's still using the name Butch. But he's wrestling, you know, he's got the Pete Dunn Dun gear, and he wrestled like Pete Dunn rather than the, you know, the rabid dog chimney sweep deal that he's been doing. So that was a plus, big plus, too. Um, he was he was, he was, was like he used to be, which is very good. Um, you know, uh, Sheamus, every time Sheamus was on offense, the place was just going crazy. Gunther, they totally respect and see as somebody who's like a big deal. And Rich Holland was there, you know, and... Uh, uh, Vinci, Vinci's good, you know, and I mean, Vinci and Kaiser are very good. I mean, and they're, they, it looks to me like they're setting them up, you know, because of the nature of that finish, that they're setting them up to be a tag team. And, you know, they were in a, they're a great tag team. So that's, uh, that's a plus. So, I mean, the idea of like those two guys is the tag team and, um, Gunther is the single, um, out of that Imperium group. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very effective, very, very good stuff. We had the debut of Solo Sokoa, and then Drew McIntyre came out to set up a match, which uh, ended up being the main event for the show. We had Raquel and Aaliyah beating Toxic Attraction in five minutes, and it wasn't very good, but it looked like all four had a lot of time to rehearse this match. I'll just put it that way. And uh, Tejana Bomb finish. I mean, it wasn't brutal or nothing. No. They're they're really, uh, I don't know what they're going to do. But when I watch it, I just figure that this uh, Raquel and Aaliyah team is not long for the world, and Aaliyah is going to be turning on her. Because, you think Aaliyah's uh, going to turn on her? Dude, they give her no respect. They don't, they, they, like, starting last week, I mean, they I mean, I mean about, the, whole, the, whole thing, you know, the whole thing is to make Raquel into a big star. Well, I know that, but, I mean, they go out of their way to say, they, they said on TV last week, Aaliyah was a non-entity in the tournament. That's what they said. If you look at the, the uh, uh, tr- Titantron video for the team, there oh, is all zero mention of Aaliyah at all. Yeah. It's yeah, all. I thought, it's I thought all it was Raquel. like I thought with well, the way they did that video. I thought, oh, it's a singles match, and she's just accompanying her. No, that's their team, <laughs> Titantron. Yeah, there's no Aaliyah in it. But anyway, we had uh, five way to uh, determine the next challenger for Liv Morgan. Ronda beat uh, Lacey, Zaya, Natty, and Sonya Deville in an elimination match, which actually only went four minutes. But uh, they, did, they just quickly they did they did finish after finish after finish boom 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 boom. But it was fine. I mean, for a for a fi- actually it was a five minute match. But uh, you know, for a five minute match, I mean, there was nothing wrong with it. They uh, gave Ronda the dominant win, Piper's pit on Sonya Deville, and then they kind of did a deal afterwards with uh, um, Shayna. Actually, it was a little later in the show. Yeah, Ronda and Shayna did a face to face, and Ronda basically said, "When you're ready to kick ass and take over this show again, let me know." Yeah, um, yeah. When Shane was being nice to her, but um, Ronda was very, very over as a as a baby face. Um, it was interesting because they have live in the suite, and she's just kind of like 
kind of like kind of almost like heelish in there but um i mean the idea is definitely for live to be a face but if it doesn't work out that way then that's fine too um i i don't is that like the idea think that maybe Shayna screws ronda from winning the championship i mean you could but i just figure ronda's winning that belt back yeah ronda you know um ronda looked good too and she wore she wore a purple gi or pinky pink she wore a pinky because gene labelle wore a pinky and they actually pointed that out um they tried to make it that Sonya's ex MMA fighter, which in fact she did do some amateur MMA fights years and years ago, and um, I think that the you know the crowd was very hot for the. Um, I mean, Ronda was the focal point of the whole match, and the crowd was very hot for Ronda. So the match itself um, had great crowd reactions. We had the Street Profits hit row versus Los Lotharios and Maximum Male Models nine minutes. And it was good. I mean, the Street Profits did all their great stuff, and Los Otharios are good, and, you know, Maximum Male Models are pushed as geeks, but they let them do some stuff here. and They, they, weren't, they didn't do much. You know, and uh, they didn't, they didn't, they big didn't, dive didn't. spot there at the end. Top Dollar T's going for a dive, but Maxine cut him off, and then BFAB pulled her off, and they almost got into it, and then Hit Row hit their, uh, hit their finish on Mensois. And got the win, but it was a fun match. We had, yeah, uh, I just thought it was a match. I didn't really, um, and the, uh, I don't know, I just thought the, uh, Brennan Williams, which is, uh, Marseille, right? Yes. So he, uh, he's just like the big green guy, you know? He yeah, really, he is. You know, in a, in a ridiculous looking wrestling outfit, too. Yes. That's, that's, and, the, uh, yeah. Mansois was, a uh, a little, I wouldn't catch, so I could see, he was okay. He was okay. I didn't think that uh, Massey was particularly good. And then uh, um, was the other heel team, the uh, uh, Lotharios. Man, they yeah, they're good. They're good. So it was, there, there were points that were good in the match, but there were other points where I was just sort of, it's just sort of there. We had a long segment with Alpha Academy, and of course Braun Strowman comes out and kills everybody and actually gives Otis the big power bomb, which is pretty impressive. But he's a strong dude. But Otis strong, is a big dude. Yeah, strong dude. We had a Drew McIntyre promo where he's still pretty much devastated about losing a clash, a clash at the castle, so it should have been his moment. Should I be champion bet, right now. And I bet. Can you imagine if you're him in that match, knowing that like if you would have won, it would have been like one of the greatest crowd reactions in wrestling in the last twenty years. Yeah, and it didn't happen. Well, he should have won. Well, I don't know what their long-term story is. You know, their long-term story may have made it impossible for him to win. I mean, for the night, for the night, he should have won. But they're they're telling long-term stories. They want Roman to be, you know, a multi, multi, multi-year champion. Um, if that's their goal, then you know, you you can't. You know, they didn't want to screw up their goal. So, whatever. Um, I mean, I know you could. You certainly could have done it. Well, here's it the thing, better. Dave. It would it would have been better for the show. But here's the thing. But they've got they've got their mentality. But here's the thing. Okay. Now this place is idiot proof. They are idiot proof. They are proof. They are sign a new television deal and they're going to make a lot of money. Okay. Yep. So I understand wanting them to be a long term champion or anything, but what's the point? What um, What does this do for their business if he holds his title for two well, more years? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't do doesn't for lose. his business one way or the other, either way. But I mean, I think the thing, the whole idea is, is that they want to create another legend who they can pull back and bring in well he already is i mean they already see him that way and the yeah, fact but, of the matter is if you really want to do this nxt europe or whatever and all that sort of thing i mean it's not like it was a deal breaker or anything but you know drew winning that title in yeah, cardiff they, that, 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 that show that, that, in front of that, that has, crowd that has that will have nothing to do with NXT you could have europe you could have done more with drew off that win he could have been a bigger star than uh, he, he could have been he could have been a, he could have been a bigger star but there but you know when they make those booking decisions they are usually thinking about the U.S. market as opposed to the European market. And, and, you know, like the whole thing, NXT Europe, number one, we don't even know if there's going to be NXT Europe. And if it is, it's going to be just like NXT UK where it, it's a nothing thing. It really will. It'll be, we are, we're, it's going to be a nothing thing. So they're not. And But, I mean, as far as, like, could Drew McIntyre with that win be a guy who for years and years and years people would go back and go, you know, and kind of be like a, a big star just off of that win, like Jack Veneno was when he beat Ric Flair. Yes. 
they could have done that and um you know but they chose not to do it they chose to tell a story of roman reigns being an unbeatable champion for years and years and years and that's the story they want to tell well drew beats solo sco in the main event via dq 10 minutes match was uh, i mean the match was fine but that finish <laughs> well listen the finish is much worse than you're even uh letting on here so what happened was uh mcintyre's gonna gonna beat the guy and all of a sudden out comes carrying cross and he attacks McIntyre for the DQ. He puts him in the cross jacket, and uh, the show ends. But the second this carrying cross hit the ring, it goes black and white. The screen goes black and white. It stayed that way. Yep. And so man, that's the new, that's I was the, that's the new gimmick, dude. For listen cross. to me. This has to stop immediately. It immediately. Won't. Okay. It will not. It has to, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you look at the raw numbers and you look at the SmackDown numbers. There's a lot of people that are that Vince is gone and they're giving this thing another chance. Okay, now I'm not saying this is going to run those people off, but the last thing that I want to be reminded of when I watch these shows is this dumb shit that Vince used to do. And when a guy hits the ring and suddenly the camera doesn't have color anymore, that's dumb shit. It reminds me of the old stuff that I hated, and they need to get rid of it. It doesn't make the act better; it makes the act stupid. I don't. I don't disagree with you at all. Um, I know that their idea is that makes carrying cross something special, um, but I don't. You know, so I, I. I still got to be sold on carrying cross. It's like he didn't really get over in NXT with a giant, giant, giant push because they liked the way he looked, and it's like, you know, like to me, like the way you look. Is wonderful if you also get over. Like the way you look, and then the guy doesn't get over with an incredible push. It's like, so what? You know what I mean? It's like, so what? Um, but they're going to give him another push because they like the way he looks. And, you know, for all of the talk of, you know, it's not going to be like it was and all that. And it's not. It's not like it was. The judgment still is that guys who get over are are not uh do not have the potential to be as over as a guy who didn't get over because the guy who didn't get over has the look and um i always thought that the ability to get over is the best judge of your ability to get over not your look i mean you could have the the best looking guy in the world and that doesn't mean women will pay any money to see them. Um, and if they don't, putting him out there and saying, he's so good looking, women are going to pay to see him. When they don't, that's like missing the point. Even if he's really good, you know, it's like some people get over and some people don't. And the thing that we're supposed to learn from is why did they get over and why they didn't. Not... We're going to ignore whether they get over or they don't because they have the look. So anyway, that's, but they're going to push them and push them and push them. And, and right now, I mean, the, the benefit of all this is the new people are going to get over, um, you know, and they're bringing in Stroman the same way, you know, but Stroman did get over. So that's, that's different. That's a totally, totally different thing. But um, because the company is hot, you know, they probably will get over to a degree because, when you're hot, everything kind of gets over, and when you're cold, it's very difficult to get stuff over, and they're coming at the right time. If it was, if Cross was coming in six months ago, you know, even though when he was brought in, it was really stupid, the reality is, is that in NXT, it wasn't stupid, and he had a great ring entrance, and he had all those things, and the, re the reality also is, if you remember those ratings, and the crowd reactions compared to the guys that weren't getting, a, you know, that weren't getting a push. It was like his 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 reaction was never at the level of his push. So, um, but you know, again, NXT was not hot. WWE right now is hot, and so guys like that. I mean, he does have a chance that he'll get over. Uh, but yeah, the black and white thing. I just thought it it does cartoon it up a little bit, and I don't know that that was the goal. But it, you know, they want to do something to separate him from everyone else, and that's that's what they did. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. 
We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.